hey guys so in the last lecture we have seen some numericals for finding maximum power and maximum thrust and force so in today's lecture we are going to see WECS it is wind energy conversion system so what is wind energy conversion system so a system which converts the wind energy into the required electrical energy so that system is called as wind energy conversion system so we are going to study a block diagram of the system so which are the equipments that are required for converting the wind energy into electrical energy so so this is the basic block diagram of wind energy conversion system so a wind energy system conversion system will convert the kinetic energy of wind into some form of electrical energy so in particular medium and large scale means small or large scale so WECS are designed to operate parallel with the grid that is uh, AC which we are using that is alternating current grid and this is known as grid connected system because it is connected to the grid so a small system isolated from the grid feeding only to local load is known as autonomous or isolated power system means if this uh, wind energy if this wind energy which is converted electric energy if it is utilized for for nearby purposes nearby local load only and it is not connected to the grid then it is called isolated power system but it is if it is connected to the grid then it is called grid connector system so as wind goes to the aero turbine so what does aero turbine does so aero turbines convert energy of moving air to rotary me mechanical engine uh, energy that is the kinetic energy of air is converted to mechanical energy of the shaft through a rotary blades so the turbine shaft speed is stepped up with the help of gears so this speed is stepped up with the help of gears with a fixed or variable gear ratio to suit wind turbine uh, yaw cut control so these gears are used to uh, increase the speed with the help of fixed or variable gear ratio so so this fixed and variable gear ratio uh, suits to the electrical generator so it suits to the electrical generator and fine tuning of speed is incorporated with the control so a tuning is done with the help of control so therefore controller is used so there is a coupling uh, between gear gearing and electrical generator then as the wind direction changes uh, you need to control the mechanism rotates in uh, generally in horizontal wind turbines or uh, your control sorry
so your control is provided for proper direction of the wind that is uh, if the direction of the wind is changed to so to control that proper operation your control is for as the wind direction changes you control mechanism rotates the turbine slowly about the vertical axis so as to face the blades in the wind the control unit monitor so the control unit monitor uh, and controls the interaction among various blocks it derives the reference voltage and frequency signals from the grid and receives wind speed and wind direction wind turbine speed signals etc processes them and accordingly controls various blocks for optimal energy so the output here is electrical generator so this is the mechanical interface and this is the electrical interface okay so here this is a block diagram uh, if there is a change uh, in speed or if in any parameters this controller gives input to the arrow turbine so it will change accordingly and it will also give a uh, input to the gearing so the gearing will be changed accordingly and this gearing will give the input to the con controller so now the next topic is types of windmills so generally windmills are classified into various types of functions so first we will classify it based on orientation of axis of rotor so that is horizontal type and vertical type then uh, horizontal axis means when the axis of rotation is parallel to the air stream so that is called horizontal or uh, the turbine is said to be horizontal axis wind turbine and vertical means when the axis of rotation is perpendicular to the air stream so uh, the turbine is called vertical axis turbine wind turbine so according to the electrical power output also it can be classified like if a small output like 2 kilowatt so it is it can be called small output wind turbine then medium output like 2 kilowatt to 100 kilowatt then large output like more than 100 kilowatt so this is called a large output electrical power output. then the third is according to type of rotor so first is propeller type so it's it is horizontal axis high speed rotor then b is multi blade uh type so that is horizontal axis low speed rotor then seven years type so it is axis rotor vertical axis uh rotor uh but uh, low low speed and dynamic high speed vertical axis rotor so we are going to discuss horizontal axis wind turbine so its main components so what are the components in horizontal axis wind turbine so so here as we can see in horizontal axis wind turbine so horizontal axis machines are most successful turbines 
that is most widely used and these are being used commercial energy generation in many parts of the world they have cut in wind speed easy falling and in general show high power efficiency however the design is somewhat complex and it is expensive as the generator and gearbox are to be placed at the top of the tower that is here at the top of the tower also a tail or your drive drive is to be installed to orient them in the wind direction so so to orient change the orientation of this in the wind direction so therefore it is somewhat costly so now the main components so the construction uh, details are that three blade rotors so as we can see here there are three blade rotors uh, a horizontal axis wind turbine so this is a horizontal axis wind turbine so first we will talk about the uh, turbine blade so wind turbine blades has to be lightweight and it has to possess adequate strength and hence to be fabricated with aircraft industry techniques okay so this need to be uh, fabricated with aircraft techniques so the blade are made of glass fiber reinforced plastic so the, that is called f r p so that is called fiber reinforced plastic so f r p they have an aeroflow type of cross section to create lift as the air flows over them so uh, they will create a lift as air flows over them so the blades are slightly twisted from the outer tip so from here the outer tip it is slightly twisted uh, to the root to reduce the tendency to stall so to reduce that it will uh, it will stop rotating and it will stop at one uh, point to reduce that it is slightly twisted so in additional to centrifugal force and fatigue why fatigue so fatigue will happen due to continuous vibration so there are many extra many forces arising due to the turbulence because uh, it is not necessary that wind will move just in one direction so there must may be some turbulence so there may be gust that is gravitational force and directional changes in the wind so all these factors has to be considered at the at this stage of designing so the diameter of a typical megawatt range modern rotor may be of 100 meter so the diameter this diameter must be 100 meter so modern wind turbine have two or three blades so two or three blades rotor are are uh, known as this is known as propeller type wind turbine so three blades are more common uh, i think uh, in, in europe and in also in india so the american uh, generally uses two blades so how what is difference between or advantage or disadvantage between two blade and three blade so three blade machine have smoother power output and balanced uh, gyroscopic force compared to the two blade machine three blade rotor allows 
the use of single rigid hub that is only one rigid hub is required and the blades may be cross linked for greater rigidity so the two blade rotor needs to titter is adding a third blade increases the power output by 5% so this will increase the power output by 5% only while the weight and cost of the rotor increases by 50% so weight and cost increase by 50% but power output is increased by 5% thus giving a diminished rate of return for additional 50% weight and cost so the two blade rotor is simpler to elect since it can be assembled on the ground so this is the advantages and disadvantages of two two blade rotor and three blade rotor now uh, the second most important component is hub so hub is a central solid portion of the rotor wheel all blades are attached to the hub the pitch angle control mechanism is also provided in this hub then the next uh, component is nacelle so what is nacelle so nacelle it houses the generator the gearbox the brakes all the components that is hydraulic system and the yawning mechanism so nacelle is placed at the top of the tower and linked with the rotor then the power transmission system so that is mechanical power generated by this rotor blades is transmitted to the generator so uh, it is transmitted to the generator through a gearbox so here gearbox is used from gearbox the transmission shaft rotates the generator with a built in friction clutch the gearbox is provided to increase the speed to suit the generator to suit this generator a uh, gearbox is provided to increase the speed so what does the generator does so the generator generally connected uh, to the grid generator is generally connected to the grid so the grid connected turbine have induction generators so what they generator do so they use power from the grid and feed the generator power to boost the grid supply so it can take the power from the grid and it also can give power to the grid medium capacity wind turbines uses synchronous generator installed to electrify villages and remote places the small capacity wind turbine uses permanent magnet dc generators which supply power to micro view stations and illuminating lighthouses now what is your control so what is your control mechanism so your control continuously track and keeps the rotor axis in the wind direction so it keeps the rotor axis in wind direction so yawing is done by two yawing motors so which mesh with big tooth wheel mounted on the top of the tower so wind direction sensor is used to maintain the orientation so during high speed wind that is more than the cutoff 
speed the machine stopped by turning the rotor axis at right angles to the wind direction in small wind turbines a tail vane is used for passive yaw control then there is brakes ah huh? so brakes are used to stop the rotor when power generation is not desired desired means when it is not required so in emergency stop activities tvets the hydraulic disc brakes fitted to the high speed shaft of the gearbox then is this tower so the tower supports the nacelle and the rotor so modern wind turbine generators are installed on tubular towers large turbine uses latest tower designed with to withstand gravity loads and wind loads for medium and large size turbines the tower is slightly taller than rotor diameter in case of small turbine the tower is much larger than the rotor diameter as the air is erratic at lower heights both the steel and concrete towers are uh, being used so these are the main components of horizontal axis wind turbine that we can call in short as h a w t so in the next lecture we will also discuss so types of rotor various types of rotor and also pitch control system and upside upwind and downwind machines so thank you very much